All right. These next series of videos will concern itself with talking about particular file formats that are commonly used with databases. We'll be using them to load data in, to read them, to manipulate them, and they're also useful things to have a grasp on if you ever have to actually manually edit any of these files instead of relying on libraries to build them and read them for you. So we'll talk about the easiest ones first, and we'll work our way to the more complicated ones. I want to start with by talking about CSV, or comma-separated values. So before I get into CSV, I, one of the big things I want you to take away from this part of this week's lectures has to do with what a schema is and what an instance is. So once again, an instance is all of the data in a particular database, where a schema specifies what sort of data could be in the database, things like the types, where they're allowed, how many there need to be. And I want you to understand how these three different commonly used file formats can have schemas which define and restrict exactly what sorts of data can be in each one. All right, so let's start with comma separated values. So it's a nice, simple, flat file. What does that mean? It means there's no sort of nesting that goes on in these files. And it's delimited by commas, strangely enough. And it's meant to store tabular data, primarily numbers and text, but you can store other things as long as you can represent them in some sort of character form. Each line in this file is a record, is a particular entry of data that you're trying to record. And each record is composed of a list of fields separated by commas, fields like ID number or name or date or other sorts of things like that. And there's no actual standard that actually says exactly how these things need to be laid out except for convention. These things kind of evolved before there was really tight control over exactly what is a good CSV file and what is a corrupted or slightly broken CSV file. All right, so let's talk a little bit about edge cases. What do you do if you want to represent strings? So you don't have to put strings in double quotes, but you can. However, places where you need to use double quotes are places where you need to embed the actual double quote character. You're actually trying to have a string that has a double quote in it or has a comma. So those have to be denoted by double quotes. So one thing you might go is, well, how do you stick a double quote in a double quote? Well, the way that you represent that is you have to put two double quotes. So it's basically what the first double quote escapes the second one. So what this string is saying is the first letter of the string is the J in Josh said comma, and then space, there's double quote, hi, double quote, to us, exclamation point. The extra double quote is escaping, but it's not actually part of the string itself. And one thing that also is a little bit because CSV files don't have any particular convention is the fact that the first line of the file often, but not always, is the header, which really is the names of all of the columns. So sometimes the first line is just a normal line entry, just like all the other lines, but sometimes it's special and contains a little bit of information about what each of those fields are but there's no easy way to tell other than just by um, people who provide the file saying, hey, the first line is the header or not. Okay, so let's look at an example CSV file. So on the left here, we have the text in a CSV file. Now, unfortunately, new lines are a little bit hard to see, but you can assume that there's a new line after message, after the double quote on the next line, after the Y on they, or excuse me, actually after the last double quote there entirely. And so what this gets turned into is a tabular format that looks like um, that was on the right. The two subject message each form their own particular fields. And you can look at this data and can kind of assume that the first line is the names of the fields. But um, you don't know for sure, but I'll tell you that it is. And so then you have that josh at msu.edu, and it goes into that first box. Sign up goes into the next box, and that do it comma do it now goes into the next box and note the double quotes are not actually part of the field they're just part of how you specify the field just like the commas for the most part don't actually show up in the table of contents unless they're part of strings and then you also have the uh, tyler at msu.edu the first double quote there says the start of a string and then it says hey the next double quote is going to be escaped and so it actually, those three double quotes is really the first one starts the string, and the next two just denote one real double quote, and then scare, another real double quote, space, quote, and then that last double quote closes the string. And then you, we have another field, which is 
are they allowed? Each on its own line. So we have the open double quote and then a space. So there's actually a space at the beginning of this string. Are they allowed? And so you can actually have new lines in double quotes, or in quoted fields as well. Uh -huh. And this is actually the entirety of really what a CSV file is. So let's go to a multiple choice question. For these four records, which of these are legal? Which of these are well-formed lines in a CSV file? Okay, so let's go through these one by one. Josh, comma, Nahum, comma, 48823, is that legal? Sure, those are three fields separated by commas. High class, exclamation point, comma, Friday, comma, 2016, is that legal? Sure is, exclamation points are perfectly fine in fields. They don't need to be escaped, there's nothing special about that. Then you have the double quote, slash, double quote, stop, slash, double quote, he said, double quote, slash, or comma, Josh. Now, is this legal? Probably not. So the way this is gets parsed is you have a string, which is just a slash character, and then you have stop, and then a escape care, and then a backslash, and then you have another string, which is space, he said, and then the end of that string, comma, Josh. And so most CSV files would not be happy with you just sticking these string fields right against each other without having comma separated. So in reality, this is probably not doing what you want to do because you can't escape double quotes with the backslash. You escape double quotes with another double quote. It's an easy mistake to make, but I just want to make sure that I address it right here and with you guys. Now, is this last line legal? Probably not for the same reason. It has double quotes in it that are meant to be real double quotes, not um, um, the start of string delimitations, because I presume that these last bits is really meant to represent like latitude and longitude. And so you would need to escape that entire, uh, you need to make that whole field string delimited so that you're allowed to use double quotes within it. So which of these lines are legal? Only the first two. Okay, so now let's start talking about schema. So now what is a schema? A schema says basically how you're allowed to use a particular format. It says, what are the rules? What types do you allow where? They're a more constrained version of the file format to serve a particular purpose. So for example, often with a CSV, you wanna say what's legal in a given column. Perhaps an ID column should always be an integer, or perhaps a name should always be a text field, or perhaps an age should always be a floating point number. You often want to constrain your data so that if somebody put in a line that didn't follow those rules, you'd wanna be able to detect it as something that has gone wrong. So once again, the CSV file format itself is very permissive. You can stick a string field wherever you want. You don't have to have the same number of fields in every line. You can have some fields that are numbers some of the time and text some of the time. Schemas are ways to restrict it so that it only allows the things that you want it to allow. This schema allows it to constrain what constitutes valid data. So the data can be well formed, but gibberish but if it conforms to a schema, then you can say it's been val uh, validated by the schema. So there's a number of different CSV schemas. One that I would recommend is linked here, but there's these schemas for CSVs actually aren't used too heavily. This is really more to teach you guys the idea of how schemas work in general. So let's say that I have on the right here some valid CSV data. This is the sort of data that I want to allow. It has name, age, and gender. The, it has, so for the names, it's meant to be text. For the ages, it's meant to be integers within a particular range. And for gender, for right now, we're gonna just confine it to M or F, obviously. If we wanted to be a bit more open, we could allow a lot more other options here, but I'm just trying to keep the example here simple. Okay, so on the left here is an example schema. It has a particular version number for what version of the schema it is. And it says there should always be three columns the first column should be name and it should not be empty, meaning it should contain something in there. And it says age should be in the range between zero and 120 and gender should be either an M or it should be an F. Okay. Now, I, you, you don't need to learn the details of the, how CSV schemas work. Once again, this is really more to understand the idea of a schema as a way of putting additional constraints on what is allowed. All okay. right, so in that vein, we want to make sure really clearly to talk about the difference between well-formed data versus valid data. Well-formed data means the data 
is legal according to the file format. Like it has commas in the right places, it escapes the double quotes, things like that. Valid means the data conforms to a schema in addition. And the schema is always provides more constraints, it's more restrictive than the file format itself. Okay, so here is a multiple choice question here. And this is actually a little bit tricky. And I wanna ask you guys, do these two records, these two lines represent the same information? All right, so the reason why it's a trick question is because the answer is really depends. So for instance, do spaces after commas, do they matter? Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. It really depends on what the program that's reading the CSV file wants to do with that data. So some programs will say, hey, you know that last field there, the field that looks like a zip code, it's actually a string and not a number because the first character in it is a space character. Whereas some will go, oh, leading and ending uh, um, white space doesn't actually matter and we'll strip it out for you. Some programs will say, no, that white space is meaningful. In reality, the better form is probably to do the first line as opposed to the second, because the first line will for sure not introduce unexpected white space. But different programs will handle these different ways. And so the correct answer here is probably depends on the specific program that you're using.